What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Yokai Delinquents Podcast. I am Sean, Bearded Capulitan. And I'm Jerry Robotengu Smith. How's it going uh, today, Sean? It is going pretty interesting. We are actually, uh, as y'all know who listen to our show, we t- we've talked about before that we are we, dr- we record in advance to uh, you know keep the goods coming to y'all no matter what may happen. But today, we decided we are releasing an episode, the actual week of the recording, the actual day of the recording in this case. Yeah, um, so interestingly enough, uh, in a future episode, you're probably going to hear Sean announce that um, we are using the uh, the theme, the opening theme for the first time. But right. uh, yeah, uh, the way that uh, linear time works, <laughs> like, right. yeah, so- uh, you're... You're getting it now instead. Yeah, yeah. so w- we will explain it now, and you're going to hear it again in whatever the hell episode we first debuted <laughs> it in. Uh, that opening theme song is uh, Daruma Ika from the High and Low movie series. Uh, that's a, we've talked about it before, I'm sure, on an episode that's been out now, because I'm pretty sure we talked about it in like, early episodes, uh, that we love deli- Japanese delinquent films. And the High and Low series is a uh, series of that available on Netflix. And we we uh, both really like this opening song. So for now, until we get our own made, any of y'all musically inclined <laughs> people out there might be willing. Hey, hit us up. Uh, we're we we've gonna be using that on this one, and maybe not the next one. I'm not sure anymore <laughs> now that we've broken yeah. our cycle. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, right. But you know, uh, we we are as always. We're always open about how the sausage is made around here. And uh, with this one, because like I said, so much went down this last week, we felt we just need to go ahead because recording in advance doesn't really allow us to talk about current events. It may be current when we record them, but by the time y'all actually hear it, not so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, there were a lot of announcements, a lot of interesting media things that happened just last week. Um, And and this, since we are recording and we are going to upload this, uh, yes, we do mean last week. Today is December the 14th. Right. (laughs) So we are going to be talking about uh, current news just because it was such a big news week for uh, just media in general. Um, Absolutely. It's, I think it'll be good to get this out here and talk about, you know, kind of our first uh, thoughts on everything that is going on. Yes, sir. So, Jerry, why don't you uh, kick us off? Um, what's something uh, that happened recently that you really want to talk about? Uh, so the uh, the first thing I think we got last week that um, kind of, I don't know, I, I don't know that it shocked me as much, uh, but it was really interesting and I didn't know that it was going to be a thing. Um I mean, it, it made it may have just been me like not super pay, paying attention to these companies, um, but the uh, oh last Wednesday, um, Sony, uh, that is the you know the company that owns um, PlayStation and uh, they did own a lot of like Marvel movie rights and stuff. Um, they brought they bought Crunchyroll from AT and T for one point two billion dollars. Yes, they did. <laughs> mm. And uh, the big thing about that was, uh, for those who may also not know, Sony within their umbrella owns Funimation, the right. uh, the direct competitor uh, to Crunchyroll. Which some you know I say competitor just because they're probably the two biggest anime streaming services available in the U S. Though Funimation certainly is more focused on their their English dubs, mm-hmm. although I, be, I believe they did have some uh, subtitle content on there. I haven't actually used it since they partnered together a few years back. Uh, uh, Funimation, Crunchyroll, and a bunch of other like animation things uh, partnered together for uh, to make a um, another subscription service where you could get a, a little bit of both of their two as well as others. And the name is escaping me right now. Uh, oh, 
Uh, I'm yeah. I don't know. The only the only thing that uh that I have right now that I watch everything on is uh VRV. That's the one. Uh, oh, okay, cool. So it's st- <laughs> it is still a thing. I didn't even realize it was still yeah. a thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, so VRV Verve, if you want to be hip, I don't. I, right. I remember my buddy Brian uh, had once uh, corrected me on it, and I don't remember which way he corrected me. If he's supposed to say VRV <laughs> or it's Verve, and told me either way, he called me a dumb dumb head and uh, <laughs> for for saying it wrong, as good friends should do. Right, um, right. But yeah, so like, I know they were they were in tight in a partnership, and apparently it's still going. But like, I'd, I had heard like that was like slowly getting whittled away. I guess. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I'd, I'd only been using Crunchyroll uh, for my for my anime viewing, but now like now they f- full on Sony now full on acquired Crunchyroll, and we don't right. know necessarily what it means. I personally I'd like to hope it's going to be another VRV kind of situation where they right. just, they own it. Maybe it'll be separated. I would prefer my my Crunchyroll subscription to cover also Funimation, so I have my options of sub or dub. With also the variety of shows they own, uh, for I guess worst case would be kind of like uh, I'm gonna use wrestling as a comparison uh, when the WWE bought up WCW and ECW, and they've done it with some other smaller companies as well. They didn't buy them so they could keep running them as their own show. They bought them so they have their film rights, their archive footage, and certain contracts. In this case, in wrestlers' case, but like so, what I'm saying is like maybe Funimation may have just bought contracts that Crunchyroll had. Maybe they just want their back catalog and Crunchyroll's not going to exist. I don't know. Yeah, um, and it, and it's really, really interesting with, with everything that is, you know, under both of their, you know, umbrellas and everything that they've acquired over the time. Um, the biggest thing I want out of this, can yeah. we please just get some, like, just a full-on toku fucking yeah. thing? going (laughs) i I, I figured that's where you're gonna go with that and i wholeheartedly agree yeah like dude like i don't i know cartridge had ultraman yeah i don't know if sony has owned any other kind of toku or you know any of their uh is it is it uh tohei toei that kind of like is part of that too with the godzilla franchise i think they're kind of under the umbrella in japan at least um so i don't know like what all they would have access to but that would be amazing like to have uh, yeah like a series of like you know subtitled dubbed anime but also the live action the uh yeah the tokusatsu the super sentai the uh common rider the metal riders uh, all the other things i don't know about because i'm not y'all, y'all tune into our previous <laughs> right. episodes where we talked to it, the token time podcast hosts <laughs> drew and nathan uh, we, uh yeah where we talked more about those uh but yeah no that's uh I think that's big news, especially in the anime industry, because uh, right. as we've talked about, you know, there's Crunchyroll has been a big part about legitimizing anime viewing, you know, because anime in America really, you know, outside of what we got on like Adult Swim, heavily pirated uh, fan base, you know, because we had no other options <laughs> to get shows outside of the same eight to ten shows at the time that they, you know, that uh, they would be running. So... Where I, I'm hopeful that it's just going to kind of do like what VRV did, have just multiple options, both catalogs, maybe uh, the same kind of uh, you know, subscription service. But uh, what, what are, uh, yeah, what, and what do you think? I, so I, uh, I really would like this, you know, just giant like app that has every single anime and stuff on it. Um, and honestly, I kind of think it would be somewhat cool if like, you know, I, I I'm not sure who exactly owns like uh, Shonen Jump, but like I know for a while Crunchyroll tried pushing manga, and it was like you know more manga that um, wasn't super like out there. Right. Um, Which it's actually it, still there on the but only on the website. Right. Yeah. Um. So I I don't know. I think it'd be kind of cool like if we also had an umbrella for that. I also kind of wonder because uh, you know Crunchyroll just got the rights to a lot of the webtoons uh, manga series right. and they've been making uh, making anime for that. So I kind of wonder um, if that's just going to continue going, um, you know, just under the guise of uh, Funimation. Like, you know, I, I don't feel like with, with how it's uh, set up 
Um, I don't feel like they're just gonna, you know, poof, Crunchyroll's gone now. You know, right? right. Um, they're they're probably just gonna keep that because I mean, like, out of you know, uh, ten people, uh, most of the time, if I'm like, you know, hey, uh, say say you know, all ten of these people uh, watch anime legally and everything like that and have streaming services, you know, eight out of 10 of those people would be watching it on Crunchyroll. Right. Um, it, it seemed like, cause I, I tried Funimation for a little while. Um, and it's God, it's been a while because I've been on uh, Crunchyroll kick for so long and they pretty much have everything I want to watch. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that, um, that Funimation has that I would also like to, to see, but like, when I tried using like their app and everything, uh, it just wasn't as user friendly um, yeah, back agree. then. Yeah, um, and yeah, it, it's just one of those things of like from from what I remember, there were some shows that I wanted to watch um, subbed that they just didn't have on their site, and I don't know if that was a thing of like Crunchyroll having the rights to that or something like the subtitled version of it, and then Funimation only being able to do uh, dub, but. Um, yeah, I think it would just be nice to see a big conglomerate and something with even more anime. Yeah, I don't know, for sure. And uh, what I would hope, though, too, is that if uh, if it is just going to be merged into one format, like, mm-hmm. like say, a VRV again or something like that, it would be actually interesting then if another company uh, starts a streaming service that offers, like, say, Tokusatsu or a lot of the other anime that neither company gets, you know what I mean? By, right. Like when you lose competition, inevitably a new competition will pop up. So that could be very also interesting in for the anime front and the legal anime streaming side. Uh, mm-hmm. We might be able to get a company who's like, well, you know what? I mean, this this big monopoly in a sense, it kind of is because there's not. A, I mean, Amazon Prime's got some of their own original anime licenses as well, you know, and uh, Netflix. But you know, another dedicated anime streaming service could come out of this. And that would be a, right. That'd be very cool. And and uh, I mean, Amazon Prime actually has a lot. I I am not sure um, how much of that stuff is also on Funimation, or yeah, if but... you know they they've got their own like rights and stuff. Because there's a lot of stuff that I've been watching on that that uh, is just you know fantastic. Like I just finished up Vinland Saga, and man, it was amazing they've also got uh the uh the remake of uh dororo um oh, yeah. yeah and it's been really good uh and then uh, blade of the immortal uh right. was another one that they have on there that uh I've, I've been uh needing to jump back on and finish um but yeah it's it's just all been really great uh hulu has some stuff that you don't see anywhere else as well true, which true. is interesting. yeah i won't forget about hulu <laughs> but yeah. yeah so like i said uh there's still plenty of options out there, even if, say, you don't want to kind of jump on to the, the big boys, I guess you could say, in the Funimation Crunchyroll scene. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully, I just hope, you know, as, you know, we we both have friends that work for Crunchyroll. Mm-hmm. And uh, for their sake, I hope that they, you know, keep their jobs or at least have some kind of uh, access to an option to kind of work with them. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But that's, also, yeah. I think I think that's really you know the biggest concern since you know we we know we know plenty of people that work for Crunchyroll. We just hope that like you know this provides them with the opportunity to continue the great work that they've been doing. Absolutely. Now, mm-hmm. speaking of monopolies, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, another very large company that owns multiple uh, franchises and IPs and whatnot also had. Huge announcement here recently. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, we are talking about the House of Mouse. <laughs> yeah, Disney. Wait, uh, no, the Mouse House. The Mouse House, or no, is it no, the House of the Mouse? House, I guess it's the both. House of Mouse. House of the Mouse. Uh, Disney. Right. Uh, they recently had their investors meeting, uh, which is basically their kind of their um, their E three or their Comic Con of just announcing so much new stuff to kind of show like, hey, you give it you pay for this stuff to happen let's show you what we're doing with it with all that monies and i mean everything from their own like disney and pixar and their animated feature films to the star wars ip they now own and from small to big screen as well as marvel small and big screen as well 
uh, I think I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and kick off because I'm looking at it right now. Because for me, I think some of the yeah. the big the big a couple of the big announcements are because right now, as time is recording, and we are releasing it as of we're recording, <laughs> uh, the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, probably the biggest Star Wars thing going, of course, because it's the only Star Wars thing going. <laughs> but it's you know it's a very popular franchise, and it's about to wrap up this Friday. Uh, but uh, we've seen a lot of stuff go on in the series, and uh, we got a couple of uh, spinoffs. One confirmed by the title. All we got are titles. We uh, Very few of these uh, got in trailers for any of the things we're going to talk about. But we will, of course, bring up the trailer if they got one. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got two spinoff series. Uh, one is uh, Rangers of the New Republic, which I don't know why I love that title. There's something about just like mm-hmm. the term Rangers, I guess, like really just intrigues me. I'm really curious what it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, it's like it's like uh, Power Rangers, right? Power Absolutely, Rangers Super Sentai Republic. of the New Republic. Uh, <laughs> it's, this is them announcing the crossover now, <laughs> right? Yeah, fine. This is this is how Disney's going to bring the Tokusatsu to you that Crunchyroll won't. <laughs> uh, but that one again, just a title. Uh, speculation mm-hmm. all out there, and I don't like to kind of go on rumors, especially Star Wars rumors, <laughs> you know, because yeah. you never know. Oh, God, yeah. Even harder to yeah. believe with that fan base. Uh, but the other one, which yeah. was a rumor for a while, and not a super surprise, especially after the way they mm-hmm. treated this character in the in the Mandalorian series, is Ahsoka is getting her own spinoff confirmed, which, like right. I said, long rumored. Uh, pretty mm-hmm. much since uh, they all but confirmed she was going to be in this season, they, they're talking of a spinoff because if you watched Rebels, you know mm-hmm. that uh, she has an ongoing arc, and they covered and it, and it was brought up even in this in the one episode she appeared in Mandalorian. And in a future episode of ours, we will uh, <laughs> actually be discussing that. We will, which will probably be another one we're going to just release out of order, so we're not months <laughs> behind. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, we did talk about a, a little bit about that, I believe. But. Uh, the big thing, too, about Ahsoka is, again, just a title card. Although that they did confirm that Rosario Dawson will be reprising the role. Uh, it will be live action. But the title card has what I believe, and I could be wrong, I'm not the foremost expert in Star Wars, but I do love me some Star Wars. Uh, mm-hmm. A star map is behind her name and the logo. So to so what me, could that mean? I think that means she's <laughs> searching the stars with a map. As <laughs> for those who have seen this, uh, spoilers if you haven't, but you should have already been caught up because this was like two weeks ago. Uh, she <laughs> asked, she's looking, for, she was looking for Thrawn, who was a character <laughs> from originally from the old books, and then also made a big part of the Rebels TV show, which means who he disappeared with her friend Ezra, the the new like Jedi in training throughout the series. <laughs> so I think her solo series is going to be her searching for Ezra. Right. Yeah. No, it makes, and it makes perfect sense. Like, uh, just with the way it ended and it's kind of interesting. Um, and they, you know, almost did that in that sort of like, um, you know, doom patrol being in, uh, Titans type of thing. Right. Right. Where they're like, Oh, you're kind of going to get your teaser of this other show we have in our works, uh, in an episode of this. Oh, so it, it, it was it was really good how they did that and how they were able to keep it under wraps for so long, you know. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. So and those yeah. are both these series are taking place during the timeline of Mandalorian, which is in between episodes mm-hmm. uh, six and seven. So yeah. uh, it'll be around there, like Rangers. That kind of makes me also thinking, like you know, have we seen some hints dropped in these recent episodes about it? could it be somebody from those? I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. Yeah, um, I think the biggest speculation at the moment is something to do with maybe uh, Cara Dune and uh, like her past. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess we really don't know for sure until we get like, you know, that first trailer or something. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the next bit of Star Wars Disney Plus news that we have um, is Star Wars The Bad Batch. Yeah. Um, and it's been previously announced it's going to be an animated series following the uh, group of uh, rogue clone stormtroopers. Uh, if you didn't watch that, you know, their quote unquote last season of Clone Wars, because <laughs> <laughs> it almost seems like we've gotten one of those already. Um, yeah. But uh, I mean, they can keep adding to that as many times as they want because it's been amazing. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. But uh, the Bad Batch is essentially like um, they look like you know, they were basically like maybe the reject clones or something like that. Like they all kind of, they look 
fair, like pretty drastically different um, than, yeah. you know, your, your usual clone, um, whether it be like, you know, they're bigger, stronger, or like uh, maybe a little bit like weaker and, but smarter, you know, like, or they, came out look, or they came out looking like Solid Snake instead of uh, Tango <laughs> Fett, <laughs> as, right. as the leader totally looks like Solid Snake. But yeah, yeah, yeah they uh, they weren't they were not perfect clones because uh, the <laughs> the cloners were very proud uh, proud of themselves on the perfect genetic clones of Jango yeah. Fett. So these guys were throwaways and pretty much like a Suicide Squad. Like you guys aren't great, but we're going to use these for these missions. And they mm-hmm. kept coming back, <laughs> like you yeah. know, like they. Uh, so it made them really battle hardened. And if you watch the Clone Wars, you know these guys are some badasses. So I'm excited for that show. Oh yeah, yeah. I was, I was honestly, um, I, I figured that they had to have something else in the works for them because they really just what brought them in for two episodes of that last season, and then just kind of like left it open. So I'm like, yeah. okay, we're eventually going to get something for yeah. these guys uh, again, planting the seed in the already existing, you know series yeah. so it was very yeah. cool uh yeah. quick one they're gonna do which uh they didn't get too much into uh cause like i said some of these trailers were just kind of them talking about hey we're, we're filming it get ready for it mm-hmm. uh would be star wars andor the rogue one uh prequel spinoff of uh, cassie and andor uh diego luna is reprising his role uh and he's also i believe an executive producer so uh one of my minorest the complaints i had because i absolutely loved rogue one was mm-hmm. And the, the natural flaw when you only have a movie to do a, a one-off movie to, to introduce so many characters was you didn't quite have the time to kind of know them to really feel the loss at the end. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm all for them getting these prequel stories. And mainly also if Andor does well, maybe we'll get uh, Donnie Yen's uh, Chirrut and oh, uh, yes. you know, maybe a spinoff with him, which I would absolutely Man. love. I mean, and something that I really want, but I'm I'm pretty sure they did maybe a prequel com- comic or something on. Mm-hmm. But I really hope we get a return of uh, Alan Tudyk's character of oh. K2SO because yeah. man, I love that character. That was a great droid. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. some uh, another little quick one. Uh, uh, we haven't got much detail other than uh, it's called the Acolyte. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's from uh, Russian doll creator uh, Leslie Headland. It's going to be set in the High Republic era, which is a long time ago. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's gonna actually focus on the dark side, so we're getting. It was a, a long, long time ago, actually. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, yeah, dark side uh, TV series that should be, that should be a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, yeah. I feel like you know we've we've gotten you know a good bit of both sides, but you know mostly all of our focus has been around the light side for the longest amount of time. Right. So. I mean, yeah, if, if they're going to do a, uh, a series just based on, like, you know, viewing someone from, like, the dark side, I, I really hope they give us, like, you know, their whole, like, story, too. Like, um, you know, just, like, them starting off as, like, a kid or something like that and, um, you know, growing up in, in the world of, like, the uh, the old Republic or High Republic, as they want to call it. Right. Um, and just seeing this, like you know, how their, their life was changed by the force and how, you know, they've had these maybe conflicting emotions and this like darkness, like growing inside of them kind of thing, um, would be like, just really intriguing. I, I I really look forward to seeing what they can do. And like, you know, a lot of times whenever they do anything with the dark side character, they usually end them on the note of like, um, what like a, a anti-hero type thing right um so it's going to be interesting if they're going to go full dark side like how it's going to end up no yeah yeah uh, the, the potential for either like you know maybe the fall of a hero to the dark side yeah. or like you mm-hmm. said straight up anti-hero or man they could just make a straight up villain story just mm-hmm. you know just completely go full dark side and like show the corruption of people and all that yeah no there's 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 hella possibilities in that one Mm-hmm. Uh, another one that uh, we've kind of known that's that's been in the works for a long time is a uh, Obi Wan uh, Kenobi yeah. um, standoff series, and uh, Ewan McGregor is finally coming back. Uh, one of the things that they announced new about this is Hayden Christensen will be returning as Darth Vader in it. Yeah, which uh, is which is big uh, mm-hmm. because a that 
uh, my understanding is that it's supposed to be, and again, this may not be nothing official, no trailers. Mm -hmm. I'd always heard it was supposed to have been about his time in between three and four while Luke is Mm -hmm. growing up, his time on Tatooine. But them saying Hayden Christensen returned as Vader, maybe that information was wrong. And we're going to get some, you know, the the Clone Wars era, or maybe even, maybe just flashbacks. We don't know because uh, yeah, because they're saying he's returning as Darth Vader, but mm-hmm. I, I I don't know. I mean, unless we're going to actually see, I guess it could be him taking off the helmet or something. But like, you know, I just don't see them bringing Hayden Christensen to be in a suit the entire time. You know what I mean? Right, right. And I mean, this this can like, I mean, there were so many years in between those films. So there's so much story that that we could. Yeah. see and, and hear about and everything and um you know it, it could be like the beginnings of vader and like the um you know his his still like descent into the dark side and everything like that oh yeah. um for sure uh for me, and then uh, like i was gonna say go sorry ahead. i was just gonna say for me too because mm-hmm. in when i defend the prequels because yes there's some good in the prequels one of my defenses for it too was that Hayden Christensen is a better actor than those movies that let you believe. Right. And uh, I always said, like, you look at his silent moments, his facial movement, his body language, more so than the hollow, boring, stupid Lucas created lines that he was forced mm-hmm. to say, which you can only work so much with. So now, like, with him, with another director stepping in, I guess we'll find out if I'm right or wrong. <laughs> you know, in defending him, I hope I'm right, right. that he's a uh, he's better than what those prequels uh, could have allowed him to be. Right, uh, and then let's see, we've also got a droid story, um, and it's supposed to be a new heroic droid will be introduced R two D two and C three P O. Uh, yeah, I think we're going. That's going to be the story of uh, Dio, who just doesn't like to be touched. Uh, <laughs> no, no, thank you. Uh, from, that's from the sequel trilogy. I have absolutely no idea. But yeah, a R2-D2 C-3PO series by droids. Could be yeah. fun. It was a cartoon and, back in the day. And I, yeah, I think they, they... Didn't they do an animated series for that? And they it's did. just basically like them kind of like telling little snippets of stories. Pretty uh, much, Like yeah. little shorts. Yeah. So that, that should be interesting. Right. Um, we also have uh, Star Wars Lando. Um, and it's uh, they they quote it a new event series coming to Disney Plus that are, uh, revolves around Lando Calrissian. Yeah, um, which event series I think, mean? I think that's like super limited. Like it won't be mm-hmm. like a full eight episodes like Mandalorian's been. Right, and probably not a continuing project. Yeah, but, my my biggest thought is they haven't mentioned who's going to be playing him, so I'm kind of wondering if you know Donald Glover is going to rep- reprise his role. Or you know if we're if we're gonna take it back to the uh, the OG, um, yeah. and do yeah yeah if uh and I I was thinking about that too uh while yeah, granted I would Williams. I could watch uh, Donald Glover be back as Lando and going on adventures with his sassy uh, robot sidekick mm-hmm. that he totally is in love with but it won't work mm-hmm. out uh, mm-hmm. from the solo series or I'd actually be a little happy too if Carl Weathers. Not Carl Weathers, sorry. Um, uh, Billy D. Williams. Billy D. Williams. I'm still thinking I'm on my Mandalorian kick. <laughs> Billy right. D. Williams, and that connection with the character whose name I don't have in front of me from the sequel uh, mm-hmm. trilogy. Uh, she kind of like you know she was also a a kid who got turned into a stormtrooper and like you know uh, got away from it. Like Finn had they had a little bit of a connection, but actually I would they kind of implied like that Lando would help her kind of find where she belonged. In that yeah. Film. Oh, yeah. That, so, that would definitely like, be interesting. I would be okay with either way, to be honest. I'm going either way with that. Yeah. Uh, big one for. Uh, and uh, then like. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh no! You go ahead. No, you, I'll, you I'll move it I'm pretty excited okay. about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A big oh, one for no. us. Yeah. Is Star mm-hmm. Wars Visions, an anime anthology series with. They call it Eastern Influences, but uh, it, it's going to be a ser- an anthology series directed by uh, anime directors from Japan. Mm-hmm. So, like, it's and maybe more, but like, my understanding was, they, yeah, they're getting actual uh, anime directors of series movies to do little one-off episodes, and that's really fucking awesome. Yeah, it's super exciting. Like. You know, um, I, I think ever since they started doing all of the uh, the animated uh, expanded universe stuff, uh, 
I, I think it's something that we really wanted uh, was just having some kind of anime series. Oh yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah. And even if it's like said one-off story is, uh, it could still be a lot of fun. And just you know, my my mind of course immediately goes to like the potential of, like great little action one-off episodes, mm-hmm. uh, kind of akin to what we would get with uh, Gennady Tartowski's uh, Clone right. Wars shorts that actually came out before the Clone Wars animated series, like a uh, mm-hmm. standout, like when Mace Windu just had that solo episode, like almost to no known or almost no dialogue, but it was just him wrecking a, a droid like convoy. And it was kind of amazing. And as we know, Tardoski's influence is heavily influenced by anime. So we could get that mm-hmm. just even up to even further. Right. Um, and I think that's it for all of the television Star Wars news. Um, they did announce two movies um, that, uh, you know, are kind of in the works. Um, and it's, uh, you know, Patty Jenkins uh, from Wonder Woman 1984 uh, will direct the next theatrical Star Wars movie, Rogue Squadron. Uh, and it's supposed to be coming in 2023. Right. Um, yeah. And, you know, um Anybody who's like any kind of like big fan of Star Wars know that Rogue Squadron was like the Rebel Alliance's like you know big starfighter uh, team right. that was founded by Luke Skywalker. They've made several games on them. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's 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 kind of awesome that we're uh, you know I I really like that they and it's kind of funny that you know, Luke Skywalker started him, but I bet we're probably not going to have Luke Skywalker in the movie. I would assume. No, uh, I'm assuming this is going to be kind of, uh, yeah, what they were doing before. Like, we don't have a timeline, so we don't right. know when it's going to take place. It mm-hmm. could be all the, hell, it could focus on, um, uh, Oh, who was his buddy that he met? It That was, uh, an X-Wing, uh, pilot. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, I I don't remember off the top of my head. A uh, big star uh, killer, I believe. Bigs, it was. that's Bigs. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or Wedge Antilles, one of the two. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it could be that. It could be what they did after Luke blew up the Death Star and just <clears> became <throat> the Rogue Squadron. You know, mm-hmm. uh, who knows? It, it could open up to anything. But basically, and we got a, we didn't get anything other than showing Patty Jenkins talking about her history with the Air mm-hmm. Force. Her father was a fighter pilot who actually uh, died in a war. You know, she'd always kind of grown up around jets and whatnot. So, like, she does have... And we've seen what she can do with, like, kind of a war movie with the, the original Wonder Woman film. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm, I'm I'm excited that she's helming a, uh, the movie. If they're going to do, like... It sounds like she's got the credentials to do a good fighter pilot show or a movie. And on top of that, just being the fact that she's actually going to be the first... Uh, female uh, director for a major star wars film right and that's yeah. cool that? and, and yeah and i mean you know um they were actually getting wonder woman uh 1984 is going to be on uh hbo i think at the end of the month so right. you know if you want to see more of what she can do um for you know the that time period and heroes and stuff like that uh yeah definitely check out wonder woman 1984 Yep. Yeah, and the uh, now like I said, Star Wars did uh, Disney did say that they weren't going to be doing a ton of movies here right away, and mm-hmm. so like that being announced as the next one is very cool. And we also have another one coming down the line uh, from I'm always going to brutalize his name, and I love him so much, uh, Taika mm-hmm. Waititi uh, from yeah. Thor Ragnarok, and you know, what we do, uh, what we do in the shadows uh, is going to yes. be helming a Star Wars feature due out in 2024. And that's literally all we know about it right now. Yeah. But I'm excited. Yeah. I, I love his work as a director, and I think and his uh, episodes of Mandalorian always had a good balance of action and humor, as does, mm-hmm. like, I, I know Ragnarok had some issues with some people for his humor, action, balance, but I, I fucking loved it. So I'm excited <laughs> for him to do something. Oh, yeah. I, like, just keep going back to that scene. Um <laughs> With uh, Din and, and uh, Grogu on the ship, um, and he keeps asking him, "No, the the blue wire. Oh. Put the blue wire. <laughs> Don't let the blue wire red." And like somebody made a comment that was like, um, "Ahsoka and uh, 
you know, their their whole interaction. And Den's like, can you ask him if he knows the difference between red or blue? Because I want to know if he's just like fucking with me. <laughs> right. He's, he's hard headed. He yeah. kind of knows he's, at times he's just being a little shit. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I'm completely down for some Taika uh, Star Wars for sure. Right. And uh, like I said, we got some uh, Disney uh, movies also coming up. We're going to kind of just run through these kind of quick. Uh, unless there's mm-hmm. something I obviously you really want to talk about, but uh, mm-hmm. we got like uh, the biggest one I think that a lot of people are hyped out is the one coming soonest is uh, Raya and the Last Dragon. Mm-hmm. Now that's going to receive a, yeah. a um, day and date release in theaters and Disney Plus together. Uh, for, yeah, March it, 5th. I think it actually shows for March. Yeah, March fifth, March fifth, twenty twenty one. Yeah, it's it's uh it's looking really good. Uh, they have released a trailer for it, so definitely go check that out. Um, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful film. Yeah, I need to watch the trailer. That's why I don't have a super lot to say on it. But I've, I've heard right. the name drop. I just have no excuse. I just haven't watched it yet. Yep. Uh, we yep. are getting a Zootopia Plus, a series based on the Zootopia film. That'll be in the spring of 2022. Uh, Baymax is getting a uh, focus on the helpful, health focused robot of Big Hero Six. Oh, that'll be in early 2022. Uh, Moana's going to get a long-form musical comedy spin-off uh, series uh, set for the streaming service in 2023. Uh, Tiana is coming also uh, from Princess and the Frog. That'll be another 2023. Uh, I'm, uh, personally, with that one, I'm, I'm excited uh, to get maybe a little more of that because I felt like Princess and the Frog uh, had a lot more potential but it, it just didn't really click. You know what I mean? Like my wife right. felt the same way and you know, she was super excited okay. about it. Like it had potential, but it just didn't quite hit like it should have, I think. Mm-hmm. So, you know, yeah, maybe they'll no. get, maybe they'll get to do a little better if they, you know, expanded on it a little more. Mm-hmm. Uh, one I'm personally excited about because I did not know uh, what anything about this one is a movie called Encanto. Uh, this will be a, a uh, the music will be written by Lin Manuel Miranda. This is a uh, new Pixar film set in Colombia, which mm-hmm. uh, I mean, after the success of Coco, I'm kind of glad they're going to continue kind of exploring, you know, Hispanic and you know South American kind of folklore. Uh, the wiki said that it is going to be uh, the main character is the only non-magic user of her family. So mm-hmm. yeah, so we got a little magic thing going on in there, as well as you know me being you know half Colombian and a terrible Colombian at that. Uh, <laughs> I'm excited that we are getting a little uh, little Colombian representation coming out. So that sounds very cool to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they also have a um, new. It looks like a long form series called Iwaju, um, made with uh, Kugali Media. Um, uh, premiering on Disney Plus in 2022. Um, I'm not really sure what uh, original long form series means. Um, right. Um, I don't know. I said long form series. I'm not sure. But if this is the one I, I'm remembering, this is a uh, a uh, the uh, Kugali Media is actually an African entertainment uh, media. Um, so okay. they're actually yeah. partnering with like an African uh, like either television series or maybe a movie company. I'm not really sure what all they do, but I did see that they were like, you know, they are an entertainment uh, media company set in uh, based in Africa. Yeah. So that could uh, be a pan African comics publisher oh. to create a Wajou. Oh, there yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that, that should be awesome. Uh, as far as, um, Pixar movies go, we've got, uh, Lightyear that was announced, uh, starring Chris Evans. Uh, and it's the uh, origin story of the real Buzz Lightyear. Um, and it's supposed to hit theaters in 2022. It's interesting, right? Because we all know Buzz Lightyear from the Toy Story movies. Well, this is like his like fiction, um, of who the that character the toy is based off of, right? right? Yeah. So, so it'll be interesting to see how different because, like you know, Buzz Lightyear, you know, had all the delusions that he was real at the time, <laughs> and uh, you know, and then we even had like the TV, the the cartoon series. But is that the is so is that the story of the toy, or you know, like is this Chris Evans one gonna be? And this is a, a CG film, right. uh, so like uh, yeah, it's, uh, that, that's that's interesting. I'm I'm very mm-hmm. curious what what direction they're gonna go with that. Right. Um, and then uh, exploring more parts of the world, we have Luca, set in a seaside town of Italy. 
arrive in theaters uh, June 2021. Yeah. Uh, Turning Red um, is another movie that's coming out from Pixar. It follows a 13-year-old girl who is changing during puberty and also has the ability to transform into a giant red panda when she gets excited. Just Same. <laughs> I mean, we've all been there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and then there's uh, the Pixar stuff that they're doing on Disney+. Plus. Um, what's that? Doug days, which follows the dog from up. Um, yep. <laughs> yes. So <it> that's <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be uh, chasing some squirrels in the suburbs. <laughs> uh, Pixar Pixar popcorn is a new series of shorts focused on beloved Pixar characters, which is set to debut next month. I'm assuming that's gonna be kind of like the uh, the other little shorts that they do for yeah. certain you know movies. So that'll be kind of interesting. I, I I like watching those, getting a little extra tidbit. Yeah. Um, sure. They're doing a uh, Lightning McQueen and Mater um, follow-up series on Disney+. Plus. So if you're a Cars fan, uh, that's something to look forward to. Yeah, I'm sure um, there's somebody out there still is. <laughs> <laughs> right, they've like killed it. Uh, and then it's uh, Pixar's first original long-form animated series will be Win or Lose, about a co-ed middle school softball team in the week leading up to a championship game. Uh, each episode will be told from the perspective of a different member of the team um, and it will hit Disney Plus in fall 2023. Um, so I'm I'm guessing this is going to be more like their Disney original like movies that they do, yeah. except like maybe a higher budget and a um, more a little bit more of a mature ma- a mature tone. Um, and then we have the Marvel stuff. But before we talk about the Marvel stuff, I kind of wanted to bring up one thing that I was excited about that wasn't on this list. Oh, okay. Uh, so there is a film uh, or a book series uh, rather that um, I discovered was it last year? Yeah, I think the beginning of last year um, called uh, Children of Blood and Bone uh, by Tommy Ediami Um and they just announced this week that it's getting a movie and as much as I love my Marvel and and uh all of my star wars news and everything like that this is big for me like i love this book series um i'm really excited about it becoming um a series and it's uh it's uh it's influenced by uh ariyami's uh west african heritage and in it she bends uh religious uh deities in a diverse landscape with a refreshing new take on fantasy um i Reading it, I kind of got like this sort of um, African avatar type of vibe because there's a lot to do with, uh, you know, the uh, the spirits uh, of the of the world. And um, they have these abilities that a lot of people are connected with um, that have to do with like different elements and, and stuff of that nature. Oh, okay. But it, yeah. it, it really expands it quite a bit, um, a, a bit more than an avatar. So. I am pretty excited to see what they do. And then, you know, you have your your group of, like, um, non-magic users um, that are, like, you know, against the the spirits and, and magic and stuff like that. So uh, right, right. definitely recommend checking out the, the book series. And, uh, yeah, look out for this movie. It's going to be it's going to be really good. Oh, sounds um, awesome. Yeah. But yeah, um, as you said, yeah, we got a, uh, we also got a lot of uh, Marvel uh, stuff coming yo, to the screen. My God! <laughs> but uh, yeah, kicking off with uh, they gave us another new trailer, uh, new or another trailer for the upcoming WandaVision TV show, and this is about like the second or third trailer that they've shown, and I still don't know what the fuck is going on <laughs> in the <this> show. <laughs> so um, it's kind of interesting. Um, was it Tom King did a uh, Vision um, comic book series a while back. It's got two volumes, uh, and they're planning on continuing it more. Um, I feel like it's loosely going to be sort of based off that, but it looks like there's going to be more reality bending to it. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it's essentially like Vision and Wanda. Well, no, sorry. It didn't have Vision and Wanda in it, but it had uh, Vision and his like, you know, creating a family type thing. Yeah, his family of um, fellow vision type robots. Right. So what we can imagine, I guess, based off of um, 
you know, everything that's that happened in the movies. And it looks like, you know, there's no specific timeline. They're touching on a lot of different um, versions of both of these characters, right? right. It kind of has like, from some of the trailers, it seems like it almost has like a I Love Lucy type, you know, sitcom feel or whatever. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw a laugh track in one of the trailers. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So like, I, I almost think this is going to be like, almost a return of the vision uh, because, you know, um, Shuri was working on the Mind Stone and transferring his consciousness and everything. Right. Uh, we don't know how far she got with that. So what if like this whole thing is kind of like a simulation um, in his mind since it wasn't complete, it's like trying to repair itself so he could, you know, come back. Yeah, for sure. It's, I can yeah. see that uh, by other, my other, like my kind of like fan theory, because we'd have no idea. And luckily, we'll actually know on January 15th when it comes out. It's actually not that far away. Right. Um, I also kind of had an idea that they're going to be touching on Wan- on uh, Scarlet Witch Wanda's uh, more comic book-oriented powers of like reality yes. warping. That maybe this is her way of coping with the loss of vision. Right. Yeah. And, and like, I really look forward to, to them doing that because... They didn't really, like, I think, uh, what, in Age of Ultron, yeah. uh, they kind of touched on it a little bit. But right. other than that, she's just been, like, you know, uh, flying and uh, using red beams to do yeah. stuff. Like manipulating people with <laughs> yeah. her or blasting yeah. Thanos so much he had to call an airstrike. He's like, whoa, where the fuck did she come from? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, like, so, yeah. <laughs> So very, very curious, very interesting. And like I said, uh, we'll know here in a little over a month uh, what it's all about because the trailers sure aren't being clear. I think that's intentional. <laughs> I think it's going to be yeah. a very kind of trippy mind fuck kind mm-hmm. of a show. And I'm I'm hyped for that for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yep. The, the next one they have um, slated is, and they released a trailer for that as well, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean... What else can you say about this? It's Anthony Mackie um, and uh, Sebastian Stan reprising their roles as Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, And it's essentially like, you know, in a world after Captain America, um, trying to pick up that mantle and like it just, you know, just the weight of of that, uh, of the shield and everything. Oh, yeah, for sure. On top of the fact that... Of course, we, we're getting the buddy cop feel of they don't really get along, but they got to work together, <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, uh, in the comics, both of them at one point held the shield, had the mantle right. of like Captain America. So we don't know which way it's going to go for us comic book fans and for people who don't read. You know, it may still be a shock if if one of them even picks up the, the mantle or not. It'd be I'm very looking forward yeah. to this as well, and it's going to be oh. coming in March. So yeah, um, I am. I am thrilled. And, and correct me if I'm wrong. WandaVision was supposed to be this month or this year. Uh, wasn't yeah. uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier also supposed to be this I, year? I think a lot of these shows, including the next one we're going to be talking about, was originally slated for the end of this year. But yeah. uh, COVID, you know, that's right. what's going on in the world. Uh, there was delays, not only just in filming, but just, you know, post-production work. When you're working in a mm-hmm. small office doing special effects, you can't always do that when the world is how it is. So they had to play it safe and it delayed production on both on. Right, all three of the right. series, including the third one, uh, which is going to make a lot of people excited because, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, f- uh, you know, people love their bad boys at times. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. afraid of, and Loki certainly has his share of fans, and rightfully so. He, uh, Tom Hiddleston was fantastic in the movies, and he looks to be mm-hmm. fantastic in his fo- in his own series that will be coming in May of t- 2021. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is following my guess of an alternate timeline. That was created during, and we're not even gonna get into all the the timey wimey <laughs> bullshit of Endgame, but like right. whether there was m- multiple or just singular alternate realities created, you can't deny that there was one created when he grabbed the Tesseract and teleported out. Mm-hmm. And it looks yeah. like he's uh, in, like in the trailer, which it was a pretty detailed trailer, kind of showing that he's he's locked down by some, this, this company. I don't, I've never heard of it. It may be from the comics, but like. And it looks like he's going to be going on like kind of uh, like reality warping while trying to get out out away from these people. It, it looks very right. interesting. Yeah, uh, fucking Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson <laughs> of yeah. all people. Yeah, like, where, so weird. Where's he been outside of the Cars movies that we mentioned earlier? 
You know, I, I wonder if this is kind of going to be like a um, sort of thing where, you know, how an Umbrella Academy, um, they had the, the weird like time cops or whatever. Right. Uh, that were that were constantly uh, chasing. Oh. Was it number four? Right. Uh, right. I, I always won't mix it. But yeah, like what if they're like, you know, you can't change the reality or you've created mm. all these heinous crimes. Um, and, and it's kind of cool because I've noticed, you know, there were little tidbits in there that were like, oh, yeah, I absolutely recognize this image from a comic and this one and this one. Yeah. Um, so I, I wonder what all versions of him we're going to get because there was like what the, uh, you know, your standard long haired version, uh, the version where he's wearing a, a suit and the like crown and the, the right. button that says vote for Loki. Right. And then there's a version where he's got short hair. So if we're going to do a lot of reality hopping and stuff, what I would really like to see is that child version of him that we got. Um, oh, yeah. And then, like, the female version of him. I was going to say, and, that's the one yeah. I want to see them cast is uh, a fan named uh, Lady Loki. Right. Like, you know, right. him being, you know, that's kind of like a god of mischief, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't know if he ever sees himself as necessarily a male, I, which I think right. is what they kind of covered in the comic of, like, you know, why are you now a woman? He goes, maybe I'm, this is just what I want to be right now, you know, kind of a fluid, mm-hmm. you know, which would be a nice thing to touch on for, you know, like I said, getting representation out there. So, right, looking, right, yeah. look, sincerely looking forward to Loki uh, as yeah. well. We're going to kind of, uh, unfortunately, like, you know, where I'm a little pressed for time, unfortunately. Okay. So we are going to, uh, I'm getting phone calls from work. <laughs> and, uh, oh. So we're going to, we're, we're going to, uh, we're going to buzz through these, unfortunately, but there, there's yep. so much. We, we could, we could spend hours talking about this. But, Absolutely. Uh, but we got Hawkeye coming out late of 2021 that they confirmed that Haley Steinfeld will be appearing as Kate Bishop. Uh, that is his, uh, Hawkeye's daughter from the movie series. So that's going to be there very are production cool. photos of that. So yeah. go check that out. Uh, the What If animated Marvel uh, series is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you don't know, Marvel is always like the what ifs are just like one shot takes of alternate realities, basically. And the, the trailer mm-hmm. showed a lot of the interesting things, one of which uh, being that T'Challa taken by uh, Yondu <laughs> out into space when he's a child. Uh, yeah, and making him the new Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, then I think we also had a zombie Captain America in that trailer, too. So that was pretty great. Yeah, because we had a what if, um, um, oh, what's his, his girlfriend from World War? <laughs> uh, the spy, super spy. Uh, oh, Peggy Carter. Peggy Carter is uh, Captain basically Red. Captain Britain. Captain Britain, basically, yeah. yeah. So that was interesting. That, yeah. uh, again, a yeah. lot of possibilities. What else are going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Ironheart <laughs> is going to begin a series. Uh, that is uh, teenage Riri Williams, who uh, created her own uh, uh, Iron Man suit of sorts. It kind of became a real character. That's going to be a that's going to be a lot of fun. It's actually a character I've been wanting to see. Whether it's going to be live action or animated, I don't think it's been made clear yet. Uh, we're getting Armor Wars, starring Don Cheadle's War Machine, which uh, it will be after Tony Stark's tech that falls into the wrong hands. We're getting uh, Secret mm-hmm. Invasion, uh, with Samuel Jackson's Nick Fury and uh, Ben Mendelsohn's uh, Talos from uh, Captain Marvel. Going to be in their own thing. She-Hulk. Yes. Getting all the detail on my yep. She-Hulk. Super excited mm-hmm. about. They finally confirmed, long rumored, and she had denied, I'm sure, for reasons. You know, because they can't mm-hmm. really say until the official announcement that uh, Tatiana uh, Maslani from, um, what was that, uh, Dark? Anyway, I guess unfortunately, press for time. <laughs> but yeah. she's going to be in it. I know some f- my friends have watched some of the show she's on that I can't think of at the moment. Super hype. Uh, Orphan, was it Orphan Black? Orphan Black, that's the one. They they are very hyped when the, it was rumored to be her, and now I'm sure they'll be hyped that it's confirmed. Also confirmed that Mark mm-hmm. Ruffalo's Bruce Banner will be appearing in that as well as other right. MCU characters. Uh, mm-hmm. We are getting a Ms. Marvel uh, TV show. Uh, that is Kamala Khan, uh, which will be revealed that she'll also uh, co-star in a sequel to Captain Marvel with Brie Larson. Yes, uh, and she's being cast uh, by, or um, Aman Valani is oh, Kamala you. Khan. Yes. Yeah. Which is yeah, uh, which also you know being that she is a, a Middle Eastern character of a uh, Muslim faith, and they're actually getting a, a Middle East, they got a Middle Eastern descent actress as well as directors for the show, so that's like very cool. You know, we're getting a uh, James Gunn will write and direct a live action Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special for Disney Plus, set to arrive in 2022. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three is still set for theaters in 2023. 
Uh, we're getting a series of finally get beta ray bill. We are never <laughs> getting beta ray bill. Uh, <laughs> we are going to get a series of short films though, starring Groot. <laughs> a series called "I Am Groot," aptly named. <laughs> mm. But yeah, we are. Uh, uh, they did confirm that uh, Black Panther will not be recasting the late Chadwick Boseman. Uh, and director Ryan Coogler is working on a new concept. The film is still scheduled to arrive in July of 2022. Uh, we are, uh, uh, Foggy also teased the official announcements of uh, Marshala Ali's Blade will be coming in the near future. So hopefully we'll be hearing uh, a little more about uh, that. Just give us, give us a trailer already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did give us the title for the next Ant-Man film called Ant-Man and the Wasp. Yes. Uh, Quantumania. <laughs> which... Yeah, yes. which confirmed to appear as the villain, Jonathan Majors playing Kang the Conqueror. Yes, and if you've watched Lovecraft Country, yes. I know you're just so ecstatic about that. <laughs> oh, he is a phenomenal actor, and I cannot wait to see what he does with Kang. Yep. Uh, they did uh, confirm that WandaVision, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, which is the next Doctor Strange film, and the untitled third Spider-Man feature are all connected, which is yes. opening just the rumor mill of the multiverse, the Spider-Verse, into the Spider-Verse, if you will, oh. live action, which I'm, ex- all. I'm as excited <laughs> as I am scared because it could either be, to me, I doubt, I, don't, I have very little hope of a middle ground. It's either going to be mm-hmm. fucking amazing or a fucking dumpster fire. <laughs> and I, I'm oh. really worried of the latter. They just need to go straight ham and uh, just do it and make it work. Because unfortunately, too much yeah. can also be too bad. Could be bad, as we got with some mm-hmm. of the worst Spider-Man movies, in my opinion. <laughs> but uh, and the last little bit that we have is um, that a uh, MCU Spider-Man director John Watts is now making a new Fantastic Four movie. Oh, we know how much you guys have loved the last three that they made. Every <laughs> single one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this is going to be done by uh, Disney Marvel, so it's going to be good, right? Uh, God, I hope they can make Fantastic Four interesting. <laughs> it's not only just how bad, you know, to me, it's just Fantastic Four are very hard to, to make well. Yes. I mean, even comics. I've just never been a big Fantastic Four guy. But right. if, I mean, no one heard of Guardians of the Galaxy before Marvel made a movie, so maybe maybe they can finally get it done and get it done right. <laughs> But uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Unfortunately, I had yeah. to cut us a little short. Uh, real life yeah, is, uh, is stabbing me in the kidneys since we started <laughs> recording this, and I can only comfortably ignore life for so long. <laughs> uh, thank you all for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed uh, a very quick rundown of so much news that could honestly fill up multiple episodes of us getting into mm-hmm. it. And, and we may go back and like really examine a few of the ones we're super excited about in the future. But if you liked what you heard, please like, comment, subscribe. Comment especially. Let us know what you're thinking about these upcoming, all these announcements from Crunchyroll's acquisition to you know all the stuff Disney's going to be putting out under their, their multitude of IPs. But, um, yeah, and, of course, share the video with your friends. Let them know what me and Jerry are, are making some kind of some form of entertainment for y'all. We hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's going to do it. So we'll catch y'all later. Peace.